Let's do an experiment about friction. Everybody likes experiments. I say that as sort of a, a commentary. Maybe some people don't like them. If you don't like them, do it anyway. But if you do like them, what do you see this? Take your left hand and make that the road. Make that the road. Don't do it begrudgingly or something. I mean, <laughs> we, we, we train together so that I'm taking liberties with you. And this is the bottom of the tire. And now I just want you to put them together and rub them back and forth. And tell me what, what you feel or what you sense. What do you hit? Heat. What's the heat caused by? Friction. Now press them together as though the tire has more weight on it. Press them together and do that. What do you feel? What do you feel? Even more heat. So weight causes friction. Weight causes friction. It's just a little factoid. And we'll come back to it. More weight means more friction. There's the relationship. Multiply the weight times a number called the drag factor, that small f, drag factor. We're going to talk about that. And the product of those two numbers is how much friction there is. There's more friction on the front tires than on the rear tires because the front has more weight on it than the rear. So there are a set of skid marks on the road. There are a set of skid marks on the road. Two of those marks are rather light. These two are light. These two are dark. Why? Why do they look that way? Why are there two that are light and two that are dark? We just saw the two colliding first. And what do we know about our experiment? The more weight, the more friction. Which of those marks was created by the greater weight? The front tires. So the dark ones are the front tires. The rear ones are the light tires. So I'm testifying about speed from skid marks. And I stop for a moment on the way to that, and I say to the jury, well, here's why they look like that. If you rub your hands together very lightly, the rear tires had less weight. You don't get a lot of friction. But when you rub your hands together real hard by pressing, that's what the front tires are doing, because there's more weight up there. And that's why those marks look dark. They just nod. They say, that makes sense to me. But here's what happens. The defense expert was going to come two days from now. And his theory of the case is that they look that way because the brakes aren't working right. Only guess what? He doesn't come. Because if he says they look that way because the brakes aren't working right, the jury will say, you got to be a goddamn idiot. I know about rubbing your hands together. When you rub your hands together, the reason is that the front ones are the heavy ones and the back ones are the light ones. You educate the jury, and that expert doesn't come. Maureen's going to talk about this Joe Gray case in New York, and I'm going to talk about it tomorrow, too. The expert didn't come. The expert didn't come because we were able to explain all the faults in his opinion one by one, and so why put him on the stand? The jury wouldn't believe him anyway. I'm telling you this because I've watched this happen so many times in my career. We don't educate our jurors well. We tend to focus on educating them about our case. This isn't educating them about our case, speed. It's, in, it's educating them about reality so that they will reject the defense. How, if we listen to the defense, we listen to the defense expert, maybe sometimes we have a report, how is it that when we look at that we say, oh my God, that's completely wrong? Because we know what we know. A layperson can't look at that report or listen to that testimony and say, oh my God, they're completely wrong, because they don't know what we know. So one of our goals in our direct, in our case in chief, should be educate them so that they will know and they will reject the defense. That's when you have a really, really nice tight trial. Because if nobody talks about this, why do they look that way? Nobody talks about it. 
you've just let that lay on the table. That's available to the defense. Well, the reason they look like that, ladies and gentlemen, says Dr. Scheister, who's being paid probably 20 grand. The reason they look that way, ladies and gentlemen, is because the brakes aren't working, obviously. If they were, they'd all look the same. What does a lay person think? Yeah, I guess that's right. I can grab the next lay person in this building, and maybe it'll be hard even to find one in this building, but I could grab the next lay person, somebody out in the street, show them that picture and say, you know why they look that way? Because the brakes weren't working right. You see how light these two marks are? You see how dark those are? They just weren't grabbing the same, you see? And they'll go, yep, yeah, sounds right to me. You got 12 of those people or six on your jury. All the defense needs is for one of them to believe that. And you got yourself a real problem.